Great. Thank you very much, and it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, strategic planning <clears throat> is obviously something that is very, very important as we begin to develop networks and, and partnerships, etc. So I do not purport to be an expert in this area, but um, it is very basic and not that difficult to understand. Strategic planning basically uh, reviews where are we going, what's the end goal, and then how the heck are we going to get there? What do we need to do? What resources do we need in order to uh, end up in that final place? So who will do it, and what is it going to cost to get there? You know, sometimes I think that... Uh, I plan strategically, therefore I am, and the corollary of that is, well, if I'm existing, if I'm in a partnership, if I'm in a, a particular network, then, you know, it must be strategic, and we must have already done a strategic plan. And it's not quite that simple. There are more details to it um, than that. So what really is strategic planning? Uh, what it really develops is it guides us towards specificity. It really gives us a direction. We need to have a three to a five year plan. And that plan in a partnership or a network needs to be developed together. Now that doesn't mean that you don't have certain individuals that may take the lead in that and begin to pull a plan together but that plan then needs to be uh, accepted and owned by those in the network. And I, I think that's probably one of the most difficult aspects in terms of using this kind of organizational uh, methodology in a network where we have so many people that are coming in and out, coming in and out, and that's why as some of the discussions have talked about uh, online, having a history and having and orienting people as they come in uh, to the network or to the partnership is so important. And then obviously, uh, if you have a strategic plan, that provides for stability because people know what the expectations were. I think Daniel may have mentioned that in our breakout session about expectations for the participants or the members of a network. As people are coming in and out, what are their expectations and are they in alignment with the expectations and the direction um, of the network? So stability, uh, a strategic plan can provide stability. So we begin to then understand what we do, what are our differences, uh, how do we work with each other? And I think in terms of this, what do we do? It's very important for us to understand the differences between networks and partnerships, the differences between a forum and a place where we come together and we talk and we discuss, and then the actual functioning of the working groups or functioning of a partnership where there are where there is then more specificity in terms of the working group and what it's trying to do and what it's trying to achieve and how it's going to get there. For whom we do it, that's really understanding the stakeholders. And we have many stakeholders. We have the uh, people, uh, the environment that we're trying to reach or trying to touch that we're sharing the gospel with. We have the people within the network and partnership. Those are stakeholders. We have funders that are stakeholders. And then we have people that from time to time are outside that circle. So it's very important to understand as you're developing a strategic plan um, who it is that you're uh, working for and working with. Now this next slide, the four horsemen, you know, in, in uh, the United States, um, there was a, a football team called Notre Dame, and back in 1922, there was a backfield that was uh, very powerful, maybe the best uh, backfield in American football ever, at least at that time. And uh, they were given the name of the uh, four horsemen. 
Now, in evangelical Christianity, we think of the four horsemen in terms of what it says in Revelation 6, uh, 1 through 8. So when you're thinking of these elements of a strategic plan, you can think about the four horsemen. Vision, obviously, is the most important. It's an idealized view. It's always looking out to the future. It's uh, what can happen. It's usually very emotive uh, and inspires. So that vision has to be the driving element when we're beginning to talk about uh, developing a strategic plan. The other very important element is the mission. Why do you exist? What is it that you are doing? What are you trying to achieve? So for example, uh, vision, it could be a world without poverty. And then the mission would be, oh, OK, our mission is to provide jobs for the homeless and the unemployed. And then we get into the values. Then that is an element that I find often in the networks and partnerships we work with that they're there, but they're not discussed uh, very often. And the values deal with the shared beliefs. And these shared beliefs provide a, really a framework for our behavior how we respond to what's happening. What, is, what are the behaviors that we follow in carrying out the strategic plan? So keeping on with that same example about poverty and providing jobs, a value could be give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man how to fish and you feed him for life. So that's where the values come in, in terms of the maxims or the ideas that we have, the cultural ideals that we have that we operate under. In partnerships and networks, uh, we often have the value of, oh, we need to have a level playing field where all of the ministries and individuals who are in this are on the same level playing field or the value of inclusivity. Are we willing to include all of those uh, ministries and individuals that will agree with uh, our vision statement? And another value could be coming into the network or the partnership with open hands, not coming in to take and grab, but coming in to learn and to listen and to give. So those are some of the values that are important in the specific areas in which we are involved. And then finally, the fourth element, the fourth horseman uh, in this particular idea about strategic plans is our, the ends, the goals that we're trying to achieve, and the means. How are we going to get there? What are the policies and the resources that we have and action items that we are going to take in order to uh, achieve the vision and the mission. And really, that's a roadmap. Uh, these ends and these means are the elements, the, the critical elements that uh, give us a roadmap uh, that will guide us in terms of getting to our objectives. Now, <coughs> excuse me, if we go into more details of the strategic plan, there are a lot of tools that people can use uh, in developing a strategic plan. You can find those. Uh, in the literature it talks about these. There's things such as the SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, balanced scorecards, situational analysis, etc. Obviously, we don't have time to go into uh, those today. There's a great resource uh, available. Uh, it's a book by Bob Beal. Uh, the eighth edition is called Strategic Planning. Uh, you can get that at his website, and that really does go into much more details. Uh, Bob has worked with ministries and organizations for the last, I think, roughly 30 years and has a lot of experience that would relate uh, to uh, our particular uh, type of business. So what's important? We need to know the direction, the direction that we're going. We need to know the organizational elements. How is it that we're going to get there? We need to know what's it going to take? What are the resources? What is the budget, et cetera? 
we need to track what we're doing, we need to evaluate it, and then we need to adjust as we're going along. So a strategic plan is important. In our particular cases, it's difficult to do because of the changing nature of our uh, people in our networks. But I would uh, strongly suggest that we continue to try to develop a strategic plan that can be shared uh, with everyone.